Uh, we on? Oh. Uh. What the heck I happened? I think we caught whatever the penguins had. Uh, uh. I'm Robert Cheney, and you're looking at the last edition of the 2011-2012 season penguin shootout. And with me is the stunned Derek Day. And I must say, even though I predicted the Flyers to beat the Penguins in seven games, even I was shocked at the way that, that series broke down. And I don't know it's all over. What do we start now? They were the favorites in Vegas to win the cup, and they're gone after one round. What, what, what do you say, Derek? I mean, I know where to start. It just goes to prove that uh, in the NHL playoffs, you have to all you have to do is get in, and then anything can happen. I mean, it wasn't like it was a big upset. It was a four or five matchup. Right, Flyers obviously a good team. Yeah, a lot of people were expecting. I think if the if it weren't for that matchup, they would have been picking a lot more people and picking picking the Flyers to go to the go to the cup finals, but if it's a first round matchup, it kind of, it seemed to be a shame between teams of that high caliber, uh, being a 4-5 or five matchup, but I mean, flat out, the Penguins just didn't show up until about game four when they throttled the Flyers 10-3, to three, but by yeah. then it was too big of a hole, and, and they didn't they didn't play defense. It seems like they uh, had some kind of psychological funk or something after that first game, game one, when they blew a 3 nothing lead and then lost in overtime that kind of set the tone yeah. for the whole series. Yeah, I think that did. I mean, a lot of people discuss what the turning point was, and I'll ask you what yours was, but I just think it had to be game one, and a lot of people think that. People have pointed to different things, but I think you have a 3 nothing lead in game one after it was at the first period, I believe, and uh, and then and then you have a three one lead in the third, and you're playing playoff hockey. You should you should be able to not you shouldn't be able to give up three goals in the third period of a, of a game like that. Well, no, I'll tell you the turning point. The turning point was the non call on the right, offside right. of Danny it, Breer it was, in game one. It was three nothing, and Danny Breer was clearly uh, yeah offsides, and he gets the puck, skates in, and scores to make it three to one. And yeah, a lot of people point to that and say, "What would have happened if the if the uh, officials would have actually been competent there and actually made the obvious call?" Who knows? But they, if they don't make it three one there, maybe the Penguins win that first game, and it could have been a whole different series, I guess. Don't yeah. you think? But that, that notwithstanding, I mean, I think it was had more of a psychological impact than it did on the scoreboard because after that, I mean, they kind of were, I don't know, caught thinking, "Oh, that should have been a goal," and then all of a sudden they tied up. In yeah. third, and then uh, Jakub Voracek, uh, the rookie, another one of the the yeah. amazing uh, uh, crop of rookies Philadelphia has. With him, him, uh, Sean Couturier, and um, I think they had a defenseman back there playing that first time was first time as well. Yeah, uh, they just he, he all let rookies him, all over the place in that in that team. Yeah, he let them play and uh, let the rookies let the rookies loose, and they they came up. Uh, uh, did, a did a tremendous job. But just to recap the series, we will hear, uh, as we said, the Penguins had a 3-0 lead in Game 1 and lost 4-3, uh, 3-1 lead in the third. Um, game 2, they out jump out to a 2-0 lead again, and, and that might have been a turning point, too. I mean, you figure, okay, you, you blew, the, blew it in Game 1. Game 2, you know, clamp down, you get the lead, let's, let's not blow it again, and here it all, it all happens again. It fell apart in that game late. I think the Flyers scored the last four or five goals, I forget, and then the Flyers ended up winning eight to five. Yager had a tie breaking goal and uh they got an empty netter at the end, I think. And uh yeah, how how devastating was that even? I mean after the game one game and to lose that one the way they did, uh, you couldn't have felt good after game two. I mean I don't no. know what your feeling was. Um no, not especially when they they spotted like, they hung hung eight goals on the Penguins and um you can't really fault I mean there's a certain degree of fault but it and, uh, to blame the goalie, but it only goes so far, and they were, I mean, they were the Penguins, the defense of, of the whole team, but pretty much didn't feel like playing defense it should like out there. Just kind of hung their goaltender out to dry, and uh, Flurry not exactly, uh, not exactly all-star caliber numbers for the series. Yeah. Uh, he was at a 4.63 goals against the average and an 8.34 save percentage. Yeah. And not exactly what you want to, want to see in the, in any time, let alone the playoffs. But it was a. It was a wacky series, to to say the least. To by far the most high scoring of any of them in the in the entire playoffs. Yeah, it certainly wasn't your typical playoff type games. With the with the as, as we go on here, uh, Flyers win game three eight to four. Again, the, the Penguins scored first that game. Finally, they don't score first, and they end up winning game four in Philly. The second game in Philly ten three, a huge explosion there. Jordan Stahl the hat trick, 
And then they come back and got out a 3-2 win, which Flurry did resemble uh, his uh, usual self there in that win to make it 3-2. Uh, kind of give everybody hope. And then, and then game six right away, it was a Claude Giroux giving uh, Sidney Crosby a shot right in the first minute and then going down scoring in, in the first minute of the game. And that pretty much took the wind out of the Penguin cells. They had uh, two wins in a row, and then they fell apart in game six, and they only really had five to one. Yeah, and look, and looking back, uh, uh, um, I, I guess one thing that, that sh shows you once again that the regular season and the playoffs are two different things. Penguins have one of the top power or, or uh, the penalty killing units in the league most of the year. Power oh, play was up there too. Yeah, power play was up there too, and, and uh, but their penalty killing was just just uh, tremendous, and it just was completely shredded. And I don't even know how. I, I don't know if it was technique, I mean, if, it was, if it was coaching, if it was just the players were incompetent. It's just amazing how the Flyers just shredded their uh, their penalty killing uh, team and they killed them on the power play. What was your view of that? Well, another they didn't they it was uh, stark contrast in styles in the penalty kill. You look at the penalty kill of the Penguins while successful in the regular season. Um, you look at, compared to the Flyers. Every time they got the puck on the penalty kill, they were trying to score. I mean, Giroux. And uh, Max yeah. Talbot with the ex Penguin, which that that decision <laughs> come back to haunt the Penguins, uh, yeah. dear, cost them dearly, uh, letting him walk. Whereas some of his replacements, say in an Aaron Asham or uh, Joe Vitale, neither of those two players even played all the games. Uh, Vitale just being a scratch, of course, Asham getting a uh, suspension after Game Three antics, which that was just a yeah. We didn't even uh, get into that, that yet about Game that three. resembled the movie Slap Shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Game Three was uh, like that. But yeah, they were. I mean, the Flyers were attacking on their penalty kill, whereas the Penguins are more of a passive, just kind of sit back on their sit back on their heels and try to protect the net. But I always thought it's a lot. It's a lot harder to score when you don't have the puck. So and yeah, I guess Philly, uh, Philadelphia subscribed to that theory as well. And as we saw, they scored countless uh, shorthanded goals as Drew just had yeah. uh, dominated them with 14 points in, in just six games. It set a set a new team record. Yeah, 60 yeah, 14 points. That's right. Six goals, eight assists, and then Dan Briere had eight points, five goals, three assists. Uh, Yarmer Yager with six assists in the series. He had a, and, and had one key goal in game two. Now, let's talk about game three a little bit. That's where the, the Penguins, because I've seen teams, you know, the Flyers did it with the Penguins once. The Penguins went into Philadelphia the one year, won both games, came back home. 2000. Yeah, lost game three, and then they had that, that long OT game that they lost uh, with Primo yeah. scoring the goal. Five, so, five overtimes. So losing the first two, you can turn it around. The momentum can swing pretty quick. But then you go into game three, and, and, and the Penguins just completely imploded. Uh, there was fights and uh, people, it, all kind of heck breaking loose. Uh, what was your take on that game? Well, I didn't. I wouldn't necessarily say it completely fell apart. At least it seemed that they were were coming would answer. But then every time they would get close, uh, they would give up another goal within the next minute yeah. or two. And that then, was probably Flurry's worst game. I think uh, game uh, three. Among, yeah, game three was another <laughs> another awful one. Never you, can you really pick between us and yeah. give up eight goals. It's like oh, this one bad. And, yeah, and they were just both uh, both uh, dismal performances all around. I mean, you can't you can't leave. You can't be giving up so many odd man breaks, which like the which I uh, cite the. I mean, they had I mean, game two and they were trying to fend off, trying to tie the series up. Uh, the the system the system they employ always. Always preaches to get the puck north. Always move it north, moving meaning move it forward. Right. And uh, and Ben Lovejoy, fresh back from injury, uh, just kind of tries to go across the ice. Ends up hitting Sean Couturier uh, right in the chest. <laughs> he scoops up the puck and then all alone and beats Flurry yeah. to uh, kind of break the break the backs on yet another uh, with another shorthanded goal, I believe it was. But uh, yeah, I thought th I thought maybe they had a chance there in Game Three to come back, especially after James Neal scored the. I believe to get the Penguins within one, but yeah. you know, as we saw, just uh, just kind of imploded from there, and then the things got out of hand. Tempers grew short, and then we just saw it became a it became a big brawl. Yeah, yeah the Caesar's Palace at Las Vegas. For, <laughs> yeah, for some of it with Latang, of course, and they're, they're, getting in a fight, and Crosby getting in a fight, and then so forth throughout the. The rest of the game. It just it was kind of a lack of composure, I thought. It really looked looked bad on uh, Bowsman's part a little bit in, in my mind. But uh, they did regroup, and then they come back. They have to win game four, you know, to stay alive. And, and boy, what a – I mean, at least one game they really laid it on with a huge 10-3 win. 
a tremendous game by Stahl and Flurry once was uh, making key saves for once and I guess, I guess he got three off of him early, but he didn't give up any in the last two periods, I, I believe. Did Flyers get all their goals in the first period? I think it was. Yeah, I believe so. And then the Penguins just, it was, it was a real high scoring first uh, period, and then the Penguins took off from there. Man, so, they just seven defensemen that, that game. I don't know if they that's were right. anticipating the, <laughs> anything, possibly losing defensemen yeah. or through fights or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, there were three suspensions doled out there. Aaron, as a result of game three, James Neal and Craig Adams both were gone for a game. Uh, Neal for a check, check to the back of the head of Giroux there in the last five minutes or so. And then Craig Adams uh, got into a scuffle with Scott Hartnell in the last the last minute of game three after Hartnell was taking it, was uh, taking some liberties to Crosby, which everybody does. Yeah. But then Adams coming to the defense draw the, drew the instigator an instigator penalty, which meant the automatic one-game suspension, and then, of course, Ashen getting the four games for the uh, cross-check to to uh, Braden Shen after he after he had a ch- after he charged uh, Zabinic McCulloch, I believe. Yeah, he took a long run at him, I think, because that left his feet and everything. So, uh, yeah, one one thing about uh, uh, that game three also uh, uh, that we forgot the point was Latang uh, uh, got tossed. Uh, uh, with, for fighting in that game, that really hurt hurt the Penguins bad. When you lose Latang, I mean they're, they're not the same team without Latang in there. Yeah, was, he he got in a fight and he thought it was his second fight because Crosby was in a yeah, fight and he didn't already. realize that there was already one fight I guess established and uh, he got the automatic uh, uh, game misconduct. Game misconduct. Yeah, so, yeah. I'd, I don't know. I mean, he might not have known, but I think after being around being around hockey basically since for yeah. a, for whole life. He'd, be uh, be aware of it, but you should I be mean, aware of the situation. Yeah, yeah. But then again, it's probably I'm sure they were frustrated with all the with all that, and it's you can cooler heads did not prevail. So <laughs> yeah, that kind of happens. But uh, yeah, definitely a season a, po- a postseason series to forget, at least in terms of uh, the end result. And yeah, nothing else. But yeah, well, they did. They, you know, I'll, I'll give them credit. Game they did got out. They went at home in game uh, five, a three-two win. I mean, that that was a, a pretty nice uh, a win there. They they were behind. They get a couple of goals. Flurry plays tremendous. They hang on. Um, so yeah, after that game, you kind of thought like, well, maybe they can do it. You know, it, it's 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 possible. I mean, what was your feelings after the game five? After game five, I kind of thought anything goes. I kind of thought they played could actually play better on the road. Though was playing a little looser. Yeah, because they seem to seem to get too caught up in the in the all the excitement and everything of the home game, and then once they get down a goal or something, the crowd just kind of dies on them. They just turn turns into a library, and then it's just yeah, it just seems to snowball from there. But, but um, then yeah, in game six they just were never really even in it. Uh, no, ever since that opening face off and yeah, five one I loss. Think, like Crosby said, wasn't the same after that opening minute hit from Giroux. I don't think. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of things that were. A lot of things that go on that you don't know about, but as far as injuries that we have learned since then, uh, James Neal had been playing with a, an injured thumb, and uh, Paul Martin, who actually uh, missed the last two, last three games, yeah. uh, which had won the two, two without him, obviously, yeah. uh, it was revealed that he suffered suffered a concussion in the third, in uh, game three. So, uh, kind of hope he hope he gets gets uh, back to back to health and all, but. You have to want to go in the off season whether he'll be sent, uh, sent packing, even though he has a no trade clause in his contract. But yeah, it seems that something needs to be done to shore up the defense. They don't have that big range yeah. and clear out defensemen like say, like say Hal Gill or exactly or, yeah. or, or even Rob Scuderi. Those guys would really clear the crease during that nine cup run. And thought it appeared they had that solved and make going into last year's playoffs with where it seemed nobody could score against Tampa Bay. Right, I think that's on their wish list for sure. Um, I don't know where we go from here. Uh, well, let's just ask this real quick. A lot of people were down on Bilesma after this. Dan Bilesma, the head coach, and what was your what is your take on uh, on him going forward? Uh, I think it comes down. The coaches can only do so much, but I mean, you have to adjust at the same time, you know. But uh, I think when it all comes down to it, the players the players need to execute. And I think I would like people are a little uh, hasty to say Bilesma needs to be sent back. I mean, come on, he. He won yeah. a cup after only coaching about a quarter of a season, or a yeah. third of a season at the most, and uh, won the Jack Adams Award when he basically lost everybody, all the star players from that uh, from that one last year. So I think uh, we just need to sit back and 
step back from it and let things, let emotions cool down before they would yep. make let, any decision like that. Let him have a whole year with a healthy Crosby and everybody intact, and we'll we'll see how he does from there. Um, so, well, that'll do it for this year. I will see you next year. Uh, the, the, wrapping it up for the season, I'm uh, Robert Chaney. This is Derek Day. We'll talk to you next year on Penguins Shootout.